Nowadays, you can hop online and have sex with strangers for free, which is a luxury that our parents didn't really have back then. The era of unlimited choices has begun and dating apps have taken over. Now there's virtually something for everyone. But is having unlimited choices actually a good thing? Is this the right one? No, I'll just do it again. Historically, dating to marry was way more common, which might seem like a nice and romantic thing, but this was also due to the financial constraints put upon women at that time, ranging from unequal pay at the time for the lack of education, giving birth to kids and having to take time off work, and most of the employers didn't like that, etc, etc. That's a whole different video. But this context is important because it highlights the fact that dating was more of a practical decision, not one made from personal freedom, at least for women. My work isn't important enough. I'm only a woman. Nowadays, there's a lot more autonomy for both sexes in the dating scene thanks to the internet. And when I say a lot more autonomy, I mean a lot more autonomy. Not just autonomy, but just a lot more to choose from thanks to technology. For most people dating online, you'll go with the most popular apps. It's like Tinder, Hinge, Bumble. But Phil, I'm different. I sparkle. <laughs> Yes, there's also something for you. For example, are you LGBTQ+, Jewish, Christian, Black, disabled? You have digestive problems. Are you a literal fucking fairy? There's quite literally something for everyone. Whether you're looking for love or just a casual fling, there is no excuse nowadays not to exchange bodily fluids with others. And if you get rejected, who cares? You know why? You have infinite options. So just swipe to the next one and the next one and the next one, and the next one. Let me give you an analogy that most people in the first world probably have experienced. You open Netflix and spend about 20 minutes trying to pick something. You get overwhelmed or just start watching something for 10 minutes because being on your phone gives you a faster dopamine hit instead of waiting 90 minutes for a whole movie. Now, even Netflix know this, so they've even optimized their algorithm to show you the best shit faster. Because your data shows that if you spend more than 90 seconds trying to pick something, you'll probably just do something else instead. But how can that actually be? Netflix alone has about 4,000 movies and 1,700 TV shows, which add up to more than 36,000 hours of content at least in the US. And there are only 8,760 hours in a year. So even if you did nothing but watch movies 24 seven, you couldn't go through a third of Netflix content. So how the f do you struggle choosing something to watch if there's so much to choose from? There's this thing called the paradox of choice. In simple terms, it's when you have more choices available, you tend to make worse choices and be more dissatisfied with the choices you actually end up making. Why? Number one is regret and anticipated regret. Let's say you're shopping for the perfect coffee maker and you hop on Amazon and see the plethora of options and you're thinking, if I choose this one, will I regret it? Is this going to be the best one? Let me read 957 customer reviews. You do all this before even buying it and trying it. Number two, opportunity cost. If I choose this coffee maker, will it hinder the possibility of choosing another potentially better coffee maker? Number three, high expectations. This coffee maker better make the best, highest quality coffee anyone has ever tasted. Never break down, and I also want it to sing to me in the morning. Are you the right one? Number four, self-blame. If the coffee maker I chose doesn't fulfill all these expectations, I'm gonna blame myself for being a stupid moron who can't even choose a good coffee maker, and that's why Stacy divorced me. Oh my God, I miss her, Stacy. Anyways, this should worry you a little bit because the point I'm trying to highlight is that you'll never really be satisfied with more choices. As a matter of fact, it'll do quite the opposite. Having too many choices is actually making you miserable. Let's circle back to dating. Now, of course, you could argue that dating is way more abstract than shopping for a coffee maker online. But you have to remember that human beings are creatures of habit. And let me explain why that's important. Habits are just regular behaviors that you've developed by repetition of a certain action. To better illustrate this, let's talk about Pavlov's dogs. So there was this Russian scientist that ran this experiment in the 19th century where he got a bunch of dogs and every time he fed them, he would ring a bell. He did this enough times to the point where he would ring the bell and the dogs would salivate since they were expecting food, even if he didn't actually give them any. Now, we're no better than these dogs. Psychologist Dean Ware explains this. When brain cells communicate a lot, the connection between them strengthens and the messages that travel the same pathway in the brain over and over again begin to transmit faster and faster. 
So this means that with enough repetition of those behaviors, it becomes automatic. For example, reading, driving, and riding a bike are examples of complicated behaviors that we do automatically just because our neural pathways have already been formed. So imagine how much faster an easy behavior, such as opening an app and swiping and messaging strangers, becomes automatic just to get stuck in the same paradox of choice that we spoke of before. It's a vicious cycle and everything is always new and exciting and your brain loves experiencing new things. There's a part of the brain known as the novelty center. It's linked directly to the hippocampus, which is the brain's learning center, and the amygdala, which manages emotions. Now, when you experience unexpected stimulation, like a notification from Tinder or Bumble, an emotional spike, like someone says you're hot, ha ha ha, you're hot, or the need to respond behaviorally. For example, checking one of these apps when you're bored. Then that novelty center goes into full gear. So the novelty triggers your brain to learn something easier and incites an emotional response associated with it. In simple terms, our brains love doing something new. So let's say you start going on a lot of dates from these apps. In the beginning, dates are exciting. It's something new, it's like an adventure. You dress up, you look cute, you smell good, and then you meet up with another beautiful person, hopefully. During the date, you're wondering what they're thinking of, what are you going to say next, and how are you going to get them naked? It's a rush of emotions that makes you feel incredible, and you want to keep having that feeling. However, of course, just like anything else, over time, our brains recognize patterns, so dates with that person aren't so new anymore, and they're not that exciting. But the problem is you've already trained yourself to pursue something new all the time. And you also have an infinite amount of options that give you the nice dose of novelty. So what do you do when you pair together unlimited demand with unlimited supply? What you get is an entire generation of dopamine driven zombies stuck in this endless loop of choices, craving something new, actually getting it and still feeling miserable about their actual choices. Now, I did want to see what real people thought about these apps, so I decided to talk to my friends and family about them. I use uh, Tinder, Hinge, and uh, Bumble. Jesus Christ. What do you look for whenever you're on these apps? To hook up. <laughs> do you think they're like hookup apps? I, I've hooked up on dating apps, and I've also not. <gasps> I've mostly not. <laughs> I've mostly not, because I'm not really, I hate hooking up, actually. I think. I don't think too many people actually like it, if you're honest, if I'm being honest. If I did use them, I assume that would be to find a wife. So I guess we're lying now, right? <laughs> what do you mean? It's all capped from here no, on. No, I'm trying to find a wife. Do you think they're mainly hookup apps, or do you think there's a possibility of finding like long-term relationships there? No, they're definitely hookup apps. I feel like these dating apps are like somebody giving you a credit card with unlimited balance and you can yeah. shop for sex and validation at any time. Basically giving people unlimited options. I mean, I match with a lot of girls, but I know most guys don't. So when they hear your unlimited options, they're like, dude, they, ha they get no options. They barely might go on dates. And that's probably 90% of guys, dude. Maybe you're referring to the perspective of women. You might have to interview a girl, maybe Jennifer, dude. Hi, Phil. Hey, Jen. Uh, you're a woman, right? Yes. So right now I use them for networking purposes. Like right now I'm looking for photographers and videographers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not that I just... Do you feel like they're uh, like a pump and dump? Definitely. I think that they're more designed for hookups and just like a person that you can have fun with. In real life, if you were to meet one one pretty girl, you're like, okay, I'm going to I'm going to just talk to her. But on those dating apps, dude, sometimes I'd have like six pretty girls hitting me up. And then I'm like, I can't even focus on one of them because you're just like, oh gosh, all these pretty girls. God, your life must be difficult, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I've had a few friends where they literally just use it for hooking up. They're like, how cute do you think this guy is? They'll show me. I'll be like, oh, he's cute. They're like, perfect, I'm gonna go fuck him tonight. And then that's the end of that. Do you consider having an excess of choice a good or a bad thing? It's bad. Obviously, indulgence is bad, right? And so, like, I think that's true. I mean, think about it. Like, naturally, in our default state, we just want more and more and more. And security is already super high in our culture and the expectations. So, I don't know if dating apps are a good thing. Sometimes it's good to just, like, go on there whenever you're feeling sad or, like, you know, and then you just feel better. That's what a lot of girls use it for. Yeah, so I think it's good because you get to meet a lot of women going on multiple dates you find what you like and you get different perspectives of everything so you can make a better conclusion of the girl that you like if you were to create like the perfect dating app uh what would that look like i would call it a uh, hookup 
Yeah, it's just straight to the point. Uh, cut all the bullshit. Anybody would use this app that I'm saying right now. Oh, that's a good question. Dude, if someone's watching this, don't fucking steal this, dude. I'm gonna find you. Uh, <laughs> Basically, the girls are always gonna get 20 matches, and every day or every time they log on, they have to get rid of some. Definitely only have like a max of like 20 30 messages at a time. And if you like want to add somebody else in there, like you have to remove a different conversation because, like I said, it gets really overwhelming. Everyone is complicated, and that's something I think anyone can agree with. Every human being is complicated and multi dimensional. So, the more simple we can make it, the better. Now, being that my friends and family are a pretty small sample size group to really draw out any conclusions from, I also decided to hit up uh, an expert on this. Her name is Shadow Rosales. She's an expert in communicology and gender studies with over 24 years of experience. So, I was pretty confident that she could add something valuable to the topic. <laughs> con el atractivo físico basta. Lo que pasa es que lance en lance con la misma persona terminan enredándose efectivamente y tal vez es alguien que no conviene. La gente se presenta a sí misma como quien no es. Presenta las mejores fotos, las más arregladas. La gente lo que está viviendo es como en un mundo paralelo que no es real, pero donde pueden vivir el ideal de lo que les gustaría que sucediera. So in conclusion, are dating apps good, bad, and to be honest, who gives a f right? I mean, we're all gonna still use them. We pretend to delete them and then re-download them. We're stuck in the cycle together. And by the way, if you see me there, please swipe left. I don't wanna talk to you like that. But that's it for this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And love you guys like a headache.